So hey everybody, welcome to the meeting. Good to see you guys. It's been a little while. <laughs> As I was saying earlier, yeah, Ursula and I are we're back in the game now from our big wind, so it feels good. Um, the we have, have some interesting kind of conflicting COVID news in in Iowa. We we just topped. Uh, well, uh, 1,000 deaths in our state, so that's that was on the paper this morning. And um, also with the college kids back, um, grocery stores, I'm noticing not all the college kids are, are doing the masks, and I, I know they're doing the parties because they did that across the street from us. <laughs> they had the, uh, I had this first time I ever heard of it was 80, 808 party. Have you guys heard of this? The, it's like the the first weekend before class starts, you start at like eight in the morning and go till midnight or something. So in a way, I was impressed. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, um, another aspect of that is our city, Ames, has um, just voted to mandate masks for our, our town. So they've joined like a short list now of other towns that are defying the governor um, in uh, making our own rules. And so far, I understand that the governor hasn't really challenged it. So that's interesting. So I'm, I'm proud of our city for that. Um, I think that was it for me. Um, so yeah, that's what we're doing here. Um, and I'm going to pass it on to Kevin today. All right. Hello, uh, this is Kevin. WTSR in Trenton, New Jersey. Um, our students would have come back next week, but at, uh, a couple weeks ago, our president decided that we will be fully online. And so nobody's coming to campus, which is good. Um, New Jersey has been pretty stable uh, as far as COVID is concerned. So we're, we're kind of bouncing around, but basically hovering around the same level. Um, governors, getting sued by the president because we're trying to do online voting, which is fun. Um, but everything's normal. <laughs> uh, I'll pass it on to Sharon. Hi. Hey, everybody. Hi. Hi. Really miss seeing you guys last week. <laughs> I need this lifeline. <laughs> it's good to see I'm you. Telling you. Um, but hey, Sharon Scott, WXOX LP in Louisville, Kentucky, and um, we we had an exciting moment that many of you guys participated in last week, which is the uh, tribute to Breonna Taylor, and that was incredible. So thank you all so much. It was just so cool to see so many stations get involved with that, and um, when it was to me, it's just a really big deal to be listening to a song and knowing that it's going out over the whole country and even even over to Europe all at the same time and we're all hearing that at once. No matter what it is, that's a very magical moment. So, and this is um, a really poignant piece that was put together uh, by Brianna Taylor's family working with one of our DJs, uh, Tia Coatley. And then another DJ, Brian Manley, um, he's been down at the protest, recording the protests and he edited it all together and put some protest sounds in the background and we played that with uh, Brianna's uh, song and um, you know we we knew that we were getting a lot of stations participating but it just really started to snowball the last 24 hours and we got so many stations uh, and we got commercial hip-hop stations contacting us and wanting to play it um, so we just we really you know we we knew you guys would be there to support but we didn't know that it would just really get picked up by the greater community and even by the mainstream media and we got my mom like called me in tears because she was um you know she was watching the nbc nightly news and um and they ended up they, they mentioned our piece and everything and that was really you know like you know awesome that it that it, the mainstream media is paying attention to what community radio is doing is I think a kind of a rare thing. So that was cool. We got picked up by USA Today and CNN and, um, and it just, it was a big deal to us and it was a big deal to Breonna Taylor's family. And to me, just the greatest part was just everybody. 15 seconds. Everybody coming together and um, very inspiring. So again, thank you all. And I hope we can 
you know, continue this idea and think about how we can um, simulcast and bring our frequencies together again in the future. So I will pass it on. Um, Ursula, let's hear what's going on with you. Um, I don't have a lot to report. I mean, I think Stephanie talked a little bit about what's going on. Uh, we've been doing national coverage of the conventions and that's been a struggle because everything has to be done through different technology than usual. And so it's just been a lot of work and um, trying to figure out how to do it. And um, I think that's all I have to say. We're, we're covering some of it here in Ames. And um, I'll pass it on because the next phone call is coming in, sorry. Let's see, why don't we go to uh, Davine, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm, I'm moving back and forth because I'm trying to reformat another computer here. <laughs> it's taken a long time. So we're fine here. Um, our universities had students come in for a week and now they've sent them all back home. And so the reality wow. of the pandemic, I'm not saying all of them have, I just know that uh, UNC Chapel Hill and I think one in Statesboro, but um, it's not going well for the universities here. And um, for, the, for us, for the station, everything is going fine. We're uh, trying to um, get together some volunteers to help do some virtual candidate forums uh, for the upcoming voting season. So that's kind of a learning process, but it can be done. And uh, I think it's gonna be, it bodes well for the future to be able to do those things virtually. Cause you know, I've been to many forums and um, candidate forums and debates and probably you had 150 to 200 people, 200 people in the room in this way you can reach a lot more. So I'm excited about the new method of doing, uh, following candidate forums and debates. And that's about it. Mm. Alicia? Hmm. Oh, I guess I am. Uh, I thought I was muted, but oh, okay. Yes, hi, this is Alicia Sanchez and I'm with KBBF. Um, in uh, Santa Rosa, California. Um, and what we're dealing with right now is the fires that are happening in uh, our, the state of California, but specifically for us in Northern California, it's um, we've gone through it before in 2017 and 2019, plus in between, also there uh, we had some floodings. And so now um, it's, oh, we're back into, you know, going and, Pro, uh, broadcasting. We, in 2017, we became the ones that were like the first responders, in a sense, in, in the uh, uh, Spanish-speaking media. No other, not even the commercial radio stations, they shut down. And then we ended up, actually, what we did is we, um, we uh, listened to, uh, we streamed another radio station, an English radio station, and, and then we just translated everything that radio station was doing and we we just translated and then we put it on the air and we started it was 24 hours and then in 2019 it got a little bit better because it wasn't so severe the the fires but and then this year we we're it's it's going much smoother but um we still having to always tell the county to to make sure that uh, they can find someone that speaks spanish you know, they, they, I'm sure there is one fireman, a person that can knows how to speak with some sheriff person. And I mean, it is, so last, in 2017, I had to go over there and like said, you know, come on. I mean, you know, we can't be, you know, translating everything ourselves, you know, and you got to have it so that we can stream the press conferences in Spanish. And it's good to, to see that they're finally doing it again after we have to keep reminding them that half of our population or more is uh, uh, Spanish speaking, you know, and um, 15 seconds. 
And so uh, we're doing okay. I mean, just the still de dealing with that COVID and all of that. But our our programmers are all doing good, and and they're always they come forward and just I mean, it's amazing. Edgar is just so great at uh, our director of programming. He gets a team going so fast, and we're on the air right away. 24 hours doing all this stuff. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> we're all doing good. Uh, so I see Allison's joined us from Philly. Hi. And uh, Hi. Sierra also. Um, Sierra is representing uh, WBPU today. Uh, Sandy couldn't make it, so welcome, Sierra, also. So um, I'll go back to Allison and have, okay. and have, you, uh, have you start, and then we'll go to Sierra after that. Sure. Um, it's good to see you guys. It's been a few weeks. Uh, it's been like a little crazy um, at Philly Cam, um, but uh, things are good. Um, I mean, I think just like everybody, we're really starting to plan our election coverage and uh, basically trying to get, um, you know, a crew together of, of talk show hosts who would normally be covering this kind of thing. And, um, you know, uh, because we're a part of, uh, you know, uh, public access public access TV um, channel, you know, we've got a whole bunch of members who are producing television shows. So now it's kind of like a great moment to, um, I mean, it's a great moment of any to sort of pair people together and get some TV producers maybe to also produce radio content, vice versa. Um, so we're working on that and I think people are feeling excited. We've got like some creative ideas that we're tossing around and hope to have like regular slots. You know, we're thinking like Tuesdays and Thursdays we're gonna have like regular uh, specific election coverage shows, um, probably at like noon. Um, and beyond that, we're kind of going through uh, some other sort of hard work um, with the strategic plan at Philly Cam. So that's been um, an interesting process to be a part of. I've never done that before. So, you know, we're trying to make sure that WPPM uh, is headed in the right direction for, you know, the next decade or so really. Um, and so we're kind of looking into the future and thinking about what our goals are as a station and then also what our goals are as a larger organization and what sort of where we fit uh, as a radio station in Philly too and, and sort of what we provide and what we want to see um, change. So yeah, it's, it's been kind of a lot of organizational stuff happening the last few weeks. Um, but other than that, we're holding it down. And I think that it's, I don't know if anybody else is experiencing this, but we've had some producers that haven't been able to produce from home or haven't had the energy, you know, in the past however many months. And I think now finally in August, some of the stragglers are coming around and be like, hey, I'm starting to think that I'm not like, this might be good to get back in the set, you know, so I'm kind of working with those folks to make that happen. Um, but that's it. So um, nice. is it Sierra want to go now? Yeah, Sierra, welcome. Glad you could join us. Um, we'll do, uh, we generally do two minute introductions, just say how everyone's doing with the, the latest news and things and whatever, whatever your station is dealing with. Um, though I know that you, you're, um, you're a newcomer, so I like to give the newcomer a little more time. I want to talk about, um, so we can get to know you. And um, so on that note, take it away. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, my name is Sierra. I am the underwriting manager at WBTU. Uh, I'll be at Power 96.3 in from Radio. Um, what I do is I do a little bit of what we might call outreach or, you know, reaching out to local businesses and, you know, events and trying to get them to advertise, underwrite, you know, to our underwriting program at Black Power 96. Um, it is a well, it is a well going program um, that we have going for Black Power 96. Of course, this year has been, you know, really impacted, you know, with the uh, pandemic and everything that's going on. So, what I was hoping for, or what I was informed with, that you guys would be able to help me, you know, 
strategize some ideas on how we can, even though we know so many local businesses are affected, you know, or whatever this and that, how we can, you know, still get out there and win support or, you know, what ideas you guys have, you know, for this business to actually, you know, continue to contribute, you know, to a radio station. We mean while everything that's going on. I mean, we have been able to get a few support or whatever, but understandably, you know, everything that's going on, it's, it's, it's a little tough. It's a little tough, I know, for us, but also for them. And, you know, we just want to be out there and reach out to our business community, our community in general, our African community, and, you know, let them know that we are here. We are here for them. We still, you know, support. We still can support each other. You know, this and that. So, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a goal that we are, we have an action, a mission that we have an action that we are consistent on here to keep that mission out there. So, you know, I thank you guys for having me. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, that's a big challenge. It's ongoing. I'm sure. <laughs> um, and on that note, I think I'm going to give William a call because um, I, I'm just going to see if I can find him. Um, and uh, Vertical has joined us. So while I'm calling William, if you want to say how you're doing, Vertical, and keep it going. Thank you, Sierra. Oh, he's having a mic uh, problem again. Stephanie, I'll let you do that. We'll oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Well, well good, good to have you. <laughs> All right. I feel like I should be like Mike Myers and be like, uh, that thing he does where he's like, discuss amongst yourselves. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. Well, well, I'll, st I'll give you guys an update on where we are with the GRC, um, which is coming up October 9th through 11th. Hope you guys have got your calendars marked for that. Um, we were supposed to host an in-person conference here in Louisville, but obviously that's, uh, that's not happening right now. So hope to have you guys here again in the future, but for now we're going to do, we're calling it a virtual summit. So it won't be the full on GRC, so you're not going to get every single thing um, you might have gotten because we've never hosted a virtual conference before so we're kind of just trying to ease our way into it but we really do think it's important for everyone to get together that's the most important thing about GRC always grassroots radio conference is um, sharing ideas and with the election coming up we want to make sure we do that and a couple of you guys have already mentioned things I think would be interesting for us to all talk about um, but so it's going to be October 9th through 11th and we're going to focus on three topics and the three topics we're focusing on are the pandemic, uh, the protests, and the presidential election. And we're gonna dedicate each of those three days to one of those topics. Um, so we're, we've had a call for proposals out there for anyone who's interested, um, either in doing a talk or participating in a round table um, on any of those subjects. And I may be contacting some of you directly to try to recruit you uh, to, to help us present something. Um, because obviously it's already you know, August 20th and uh, we, need to, we need to make some time. So um, if you have any ideas for presentations, um, like I'm gonna do the remote broadcasting presentation, uh, try to get more remoting. Davin, I thought maybe your Dropbox thing could be interesting, you know, for the pandemic day where we're um, trying to work out, you know, how to broadcast in this weird situation. Um, and then, um, for example, we on the protest day, um, well, one, we want to be dealing with, you know, what's happening and why these protests are happening and, and the justice movement and what the goals are. And then also look, sort of look internally have a, a time when all the stations can kind of look are they representing you know their community and how can we better represent our communities um and then we'd like to focus on um some of the panels on how do you cover the protests safely it's something we've talked about here a lot 
Um, and we thought it, we thought about having a live streamer panel, which would be cool to have a um, you know have folks from different parts of the world. Obviously, here in Louisville, we've been having a lot of um, action. I know Portland. Um, I, you guys up in Philly, there's been a lot of activity up there. So, um, so anyway, I'd like to. I'll um, I'll probably be calling on you all versus you know using the things you've shared in this group if, if you're going to be useful uh, for for some kind of presentation. But we'd also really like to offer you guys um, the opportunity to present you know ideas as well. And and you guys were talking about the presidential election uh, coverage and the candidates forum. So that would be on another day where we'd hopefully have some kind of roundtable where stations are sharing how they're covering the elections, uh, maybe have an ex FCC expert there that can let us know what we can and can't do legally and you know what we need to keep up with in our public file and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, that just wanted to kind of rekindle uh, the GRC thing with you guys because um, we definitely need to, to start pulling some presentations together. But mainly it's just gonna be a great opportunity for everyone to get together and share ideas and kind of catch up and then um, push through this presidential election, uh, hopefully in a positive way, and then get through this dang pandemic. And then we'd love to have everybody here in Louisville. Um, it's really exciting, everything that's happening right now. It's, uh, it's Sharon, I've, Sharon, I've had a, um, numerous requests that there be another Zoom meeting about the GRC. Would you be uh, open to doing it again, maybe in this format? to just have another another meeting focused on the GRC? She was just emailing me about that today. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, we, well, I think you're on that too, actually, Ursula. Um, and I, I was thinking, I know that we want to do the uh, podcast, a, a, a group talk about that too. So um, I was I got in touch with Abhinav and so just figure out in the next couple of weeks, basically who wants to go first and who wants to go second. Yeah, I think uh, I think Sharon should go first. Okay, well, then I don't want to. I know the podcasting is is exciting, and I don't want to bump that. Um, no, well, I think no, you, I think no, you know what it is. It, it's um, uh, we're we're right now in the middle of working with our lawyer to finish the contract for it, and so I, I would rather give the presentation after the contract is finished, so that I can answer those questions as well. You know. So I'd rather you went first because I'd, I'd like to have that part of it finished. Cool, that's great. Um, well, we'll communicate about you know who all we want to open up to because what we're the reason we wanted to wait is because it was just we really needed to figure out what we were going to do with this conference and how it was going to look. Um, so you know, schedule wise and what we could manage as a station and that kind of stuff. So we we have a good structure now, and now we really just need to fill it in. Uh, with great speakers and I think um, connecting with the broader radio gods and goddesses um, to have have y'all's input would be fantastic because I know you have a great network out there so yes if that sounds good to everybody okay. I'd love to have another meeting about it yeah let's just plan it for next week then cool and um, uh, William is coming <laughs> he yeah. uh, I was gonna check, Ursula, did you, is there anyone else trying to get in the meeting? Is, is okay, he's not here yet, okay. Well, he's on his way, okay. Uh, who, who are you waiting for? William, he's the one who's presenting today. He's here, Drax. he's here. Oh, he is here, oh, I just, he's here. oh, there he is, oh, hey, okay, great. <laughs> the man of the hour. Hey, William. How's everybody doing? Um, we're doing okay. good. There's a lot of I've stuff been, going on. Yeah, yeah, I've been uh, mad. You know, like, I, I talked to a, a lady from, uh, I forgot, from Florida. Is she, is she on the line? Um, last time, you mean? No, uh, she called me. Uh, uh, we, I just, I've been, actually, I've been uh, on the reservation. Uh, um, we got an opportunity to build uh, the broadband network. We got a grant here through the COVID Act. And so I've been uh, on a reservation, and, and it's not really good, really good uh, uh, telecommunication on the reservation. So. Oh, okay. But I know I thought I know a, a young lady called me from Florida. I think she was on the last call. She had some specific questions. So. Uh, that might have been either Sandy or Sierra, maybe. Um, maybe I think maybe. with us today. 
Okay. Um, she's the representative from, from Florida today, so. Um, okay. They're, yeah, they're looking forward to your talk. <laughs> okay. So it, am I, am I, it's, it's time for me to go? <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. So we all said hi, so you can say hi and then just go into it. Oh, man, y'all make me feel shy. I'm feeling shy right now. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll make it a soft introduction to warm you up. So William, okay. from Omaha, or he's working out of Omaha, Nebraska right now. I don't know. Are you from Omaha, too? Uh, born in, in California, Riverside, but my dad was in Air Force, been three months old. I claim Omaha. Okay, cool. So he's going to talk to us today about uh, long, short-term and long-term strategies for keeping radio going, especially during these hard times. And All right. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate this time. Um, I'm just going to just get, I'm, I'm pretty kind of like a raw uh, type of uh, gentleman when it comes just to information. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go probably go in specifics. So we're going to just talk about government on how I access funds through the government. Um, I always read legislation. And so, you know, a lot of people uh, get emotional when it comes to legislation, but I just follow, you know, the issues. And so uh, when, when money came down from the government, I just, you know, just followed the money and seen and saw where that money was allocated through the state. All the money, the governor office, and a governor was mandated by federal law to stop this, this money in different categories. Um, one area was uh, retaining, especially here in Nebraska. Um, so if lost jobs, so they put a lot of money in retraining dollars. And so that trickled down from, from, the, from the state level all the way down to the, to the county, to the city level. Um, also, if you have pockets over 500,000, uh, those, those cities, sorry about that, those cities also got monies from the federal government. So we're talking about state government got, got monies, county government got monies, and then in cities that were over 500,000 over 500, in population, they got money also. So if you're like in Philadelphia or Pennsylvania, you, you're probably hitting all three levels where all three levels of government are, are have COVID money, uh, all that money is, they're, they're required to advocate uh, the, their services. And so from the government level, let's talk about the government level for a second, the government level is, is responsible for the, the total COVID messaging. And of course, the, uh, they always look for the big people, the big chains to, to push it out. But I let them know, so we grassroots, grassroots, we got way more grass over here. So we, we got way more people that listen to us and, and that are affected by their policies. Um, and so, so I, I, use my, I use our radio arm. I kind of threaten them with a big mic. You know what I mean? I want to let the people know that y'all not treating them right, uh, you know, indirectly and, and, and politely with a smile. Um, but I just follow the dollars. So, that, so the government, the governor has to allocate dollars and they go to specific departments. Each department within a government has money, COVID money. And so they have to develop policies. So all that policy is, is public, is public record. And so I get access to, to that, that policy and ask and see where they got spent money. And then I call them and I let them know that uh, uh, we reached uh, uh, the same people as the big boys, but also uh, we can reach them uh, our, your dollar investing with us will go a lot further because uh, five thousand dollars with us, well, we can we can advertise a little bit longer than five thousand dollars with with a station uh, with a class A station, and so and then also, uh, you know, we sell the time. We can also you know sweeten it with uh, we'll we'll throw in some in kind uh, ads, and so so I do a little bit. Uh, I give in order to get, especially if I'm new, if I don't know them. But I've been in this community for 50, I'm 55. I'm pretty known in this community. Um, and so I, um, um, I have different connections and influences. And, and if you have those connections, influences, this is the time to pull all those connections, influences, uh, and uh, to, to get movement in regards to, to getting dollars. So uh, right now, the 
So right now we got money from uh, um, um, the Highway Patrol. Right now we're, we're targeting the, uh, the uh, Health and Human Service Department. So uh, and then also, asking, um, does that, is he answering your question, Davine, about where do we go to find out who has the money? Uh, you, you basically go to, uh, oh, there you go. was that the question? Yeah, where do, how do you go yeah. to find the monies? How do you know, uh, well, you know like, where do you need uh, to go? Yeah. Usually, uh, uh, the, usually go to the governor website. Go to your, your governor website. They have to put that information out where that COVID money is going to. And they, they usually have to have a, a, a definition where it's going to and a timeline. Most of this money has to be spent by December 31st. So uh, I will go to your governor timeline, I mean, uh, website. They have, they should have a, a time, uh, well, a, a time message of where that money is going to. There should be contact numbers of where, uh, whatever the, the department that the money is allocated to and a, and a contact person, because they have to report that all that money, they have to report every cent of that money back to the federal government, or they have to repay that, that money back. Also, if we're talking about, that's the, that's the state level. If we're talking about the county level, again, go to the county website, if it's the city level, you go to the city website if, if, they, if they have a population over 500,000. They have to report that money. You know how the government is, the big boys, the feds, they want a, 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 a accountability when they're giving out free money. Uh, and so they have to put that money out on a state, county, and city websites. So the mayor, the uh, usually the, the county commissioners are usually going to be making that decision on the county level. And it usually uh, uh, we got a unit camera here, so you guys probably got two uh, two sides of government uh, in your states. And so the states are, are, are again the governor going to get the money. He'll make some independent decisions. Some decisions going to have to be made by the legislation. So, so that's that's government as far as getting money. Is there any more questions as far as government? Doesn't okay. Let, yeah. Any more questions about government? Okay, let's move to hospitals. Hospitals are front line. Hospitals got to advocate that they got testing. Well, in the well, William, I, I'm sorry, I had a little trouble. Did you go? Into, did you go into FEMA? Like how have you applied for a FEMA grant? No, I, no, I haven't. But I'm writing the notes down, Ursula. I'm writing the notes down. Well, yeah, because I'd really like to apply for a FEMA grant, but it seems really daunting to our board of directors. So I'm wondering if anybody has tried to do that. We well, you know most of the grants I apply for is through the state, and um, yeah, FEMA is federal. But as far as I know, it usually comes down through the counties, through the emergency right. services. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. All right, just one. Yeah, I haven't heard too much on FEMA because I know FEMA do it what, with more direct natural disasters um, and this more of a health. And so uh, dollars, again, um, are going to all the hospitals in, in your local community. So you're talking about major hospitals, but also you're talking about your community hospitals that dollars are allocated. Uh, here in our community in North Omaha, as well as South Omaha, we have two local hospitals, small hospital that service the community. One is Charles Drew, the other is South Omaha, which is mainly Hispanic area. One world covers those area. They got dollars from the federal government through the state to set up testings in, in the community. And so they need outreach. They need to let the community know that they got tested. So they have some marketing dollars to let the community know that testing is going on. Uh, here in Nebraska, uh, they did it on two levels. The governor uh, developed uh, test, on, test Nebraska, and that's basically a model from other states. And you might have something like that in your state. I think I, I think they got one at Test Colorado or Test Iowa. It's basically the same system where the governor is putting money into testing, which is in the, the hospital, the, the hospital dollars. And so we got Test Nebraska here in our community. I got money from the governor office uh, through uh, 
through, I forget through, uh, I think that through, actually, I think that, that was through the actual Department of uh, uh, Health. I got dollars from them to run, to run that ad. And so now I'm going at the departments because each department got different ad based off, based off their department. So when it comes to hospitals, the governor set up his own testing. Then the county, the county here in Nebraska is all responsible for, uh, we got a county hospital. So they, they are, are in charge for all indigent individuals in the county. So, uh, so they're responsible for the health of, of, of the community, regardless if you got money or not. So every Friday, have the health department come in. So sometimes you got to give in order to get. And so uh, we have the health department come in and, and, and uh, uh, Phil Rooney, he advocates for an hour. We dialogue about the local numbers because people care about local issues. Uh, now the health, our, our health department feel emboldened. Now they come to me with dollars to advocate that uh, they need to keep their own message out because they see the worth of it. They're getting feedback from the community. And so uh, sometimes I just gave a little bit and then once, once they felt the value, I asked for money. I asked, well, we need to, we need to, to expand the marketing. You come in here every Friday for an hour, but we need to have, we need to have messaging Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So now we're in, we're in that dialogue. So now I'm talking to the county, not only health department, but also talk to the county government that controls the, the dollars for, for each department. I had a meeting with the uh, Department of uh, Health and Human Service. I brought the director on Monday. I interviewed him and his, his deputy director. After the meeting, uh, I found out his, uh, uh, what he does personally. He does music personally. I played some of his tracks on, on air. And they love me, baby. They love me. So, so we talked. We talked money afterwards. We talked about them uh, doing a six-month campaign, advocating uh, uh, um, this, um, the, their department uh, um, um, goals in helping individuals with discrimination in housing, uh, employment, and uh, and occupancy of other areas, because they know people are are dealing with uh, evictions they know uh um and they know they're dealing with the, with with that pressure of, of of this corona and so they got dollars to advocate and so so that's on the that's on the uh, uh the government uh i mean the county but the county again the county controls the county hospital which controls the county dollars for that hospital again you gotta, you gotta know gotta follow the money baby you gotta follow the money and you gotta know the decision makers that are making the decisions of spinning it. Right now, they, they're so used to going to the big boys, but uh, you gotta be a, 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 a what do you call it? Uh, uh, I, call, I say call, I, I call it positive havoc. You gotta cause positive havoc. You gotta let them know that you exist and that we, you also have a platform. Uh, so hospitals have dollars to give out because they have to do outreach. Um, most hospitals have to do outreach because they're doing testing on a local level. And so that's how I've been able to get dollars from, from hospitals because they have to, by federal law, uh, uh, they have budgets to make sure that people know about the testing that's going on. So that's the hospitals. William, when you, William, when you say yeah. that there's, you get money from them, are you talking about underwriting or grants? Yes, yes, yes underwriting. Under, underwriting. So they, they pay you for to put messages on the air. Yes, yes, yes. Or 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 or, or, or they put PSAs. However, they pay for the PSAs because again, that's part of the the uh, of the corona. They got dollars to to pay for those PSAs. Also, I had another question. Can I can I ask you that? Yes. Uh, when you have the public health department on, uh, you, you say weekly? Yeah, every Friday I have the, our Douglas County Health Department. And and how long do you have them on for? Uh, they usually stay on for about an hour. He gets here about 7.30. Uh, sometimes he so, stay here. 
So uh, what's the so what's the agenda when they're on the air? What 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 all do you do with them? What well, uh, he comes in with a, a, a basically a report of the latest numbers in Douglas County. He gives an update from the uh, the top county officials. Uh, um, he let us know about uh, any uh, policy changes, any mandate changes that have happened. He also talks about the collaboration with the, the, the local school district and, and what they're doing with the local school district and some of the other collaborations with the, the, uh, um, uh, the other clusters, like uh, uh, what do you call them, places, uh, uh, meat processing uh, uh, facilities. And so he gives us real-time information uh, about what's actually happening on the ground. Also, uh, we have, uh, we, we stream, of course, Facebook and Ustream, I mean, Facebook and YouTube. And so the community are able to, to actually ask questions. So we, we make the community involved in, 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 in the broadcast also. Any other questions? So, uh, sorry, I'll, I'll jump in. Um, I might have missed, did you say you talked to someone in specific at the hospitals um, or are you going yeah. more through the counties? Yeah, uh, uh, when it comes to, um, uh, counties gotta give money to, to like to the county hospital, but for regular hospitals, community hospitals and regular, uh, the major trauma hospitals, all of them have marketing departments. All of them have marketing departments. So we're not doing anything different. Uh, only thing that we know we're doing different is that we know they got at, dollars allocated for a corona and they got to spend it and they got to spend it diversely and and since this race is it's, it's a part of the conversation also and and, and minorities are more on the front line or, or blue collar workers and, and since our station reached those individuals uh, are on, a, on, a, on a greater level than even the big boys then we we have to they have to use our platform uh, I, I, I do not give them an excuse for not using our platform. If they don't use our platform, I'm gonna let them know that I reached 700,000 people and my people ain't gonna like it, that you're not being a good neighbor, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so you know, I'm from a community, I grew up in, I, I grew up in a project, so I'm molding my, I'm going through behavioral modification, so, uh, uh, no, no, sometimes you got to uh, let them know that uh, we got listeners and our listeners care and our listeners will react to what we say. So I just, I just remind them of that. So. Davine is curious how you got started. How you, um, how did you know, how did you get started to know you could do this process? Um, well, you know, when, uh, um, when you broke, you come from a broke community. Uh, my mama always said, a closed mouth do not get fed. And so uh, I had to open my mouth and start, uh, uh, and start just saying, um, expecting no, but, uh, uh, but work for yeses. So it's just about just, it's just about numbers, about mathematics. And, uh, and uh, I go off the edges of my mom, it's about relationships. And so I have a lot of great relationships and, and I loyal and honest with people and uh, those those ethics that my mom taught me earlier have helped me out now. Yeah, this is awesome. Really, you know, just shows how resourceful and really thinking about what's going on here and where all this big money is going and, and how mm -hmm. important it is for stations like us to, to get in on that, you know, and to get in on the messaging and to get in on the support from the government. Um, right. And then indirectly, indirectly, that's great, creating more attention for and creating more power for low power FMs because, uh, I mean, uh, we have a lot of listeners. Uh, the behavior uh, when people uh, go on the radio and they go down, they, they go, they go station by station and then they, they, they can't do unique stations and most low power FM stations have unique programming and we have, we have fan base. I have I have fan base that I don't even think about, I don't even know about. I mean, uh, the other day I was in a sauna. I was in a sauna uh, the other day because we gotta stay healthy. Those that's one of the things that we advocate on our station is everybody stay healthy for their own body type. So I went to the sauna and it was steam in there, and I've got my headphones on and I listened to Instrumental 
And so I'll be, I, I rap, you know, I'll be in there rapping. And so um, there's like three other guys in there. And so uh, one of the guys, uh, he said, I recognize your voice. He said, man, I listen to you all the time. And it was a young, a young kid, probably like about his 20s. No, I, I didn't expect him to uh, be a fan, listen to, me, to myself. So, so you never know who's listening. You never know. And, and Nielsen ratings and all these other ratings, they, they really can't pinpoint our listener base. And so uh, I never sell myself short. I over, always oversell. Sierra, can you put your mute on? I think your uh, sound is bleeding over. Fame, I was curious. Um, if you don't, let's say you don't have a contact at one of the hospitals or whatever, would you just kind of call up the marketing department? Would you shoot them an yeah. email? Yeah, uh, Julia, I'll call. I'll see if they work schedule. We have, we have fan base. I have fan base. I don't even think about it. I don't even know about it. Uh, yeah, no. Let's see. yeah, I would uh, find out if they were actually working at home or not at home, and then I'll follow up with them. Know that uh, uh, that you exist because sometimes it, uh, they might not know you exist. Send them a demo. I used to send a press kit with our coverage area from the FCC. Um, if you do get ratings, I, I send all that all that information over. I send all my uh, my digital information over as far as our reach, and because uh, that most of the time they want to know who you talk to, who you reach, and uh, I send all that information over, especially if you're brand new. And then to stay consistent, and then also what I would do, I would invite them on your air for free, invite them on, and let them tell their story because they got they, they got to tell a story. And usually those entities have a spokesperson. Yeah, that's great advice. We've made a lot of good relationships with businesses that way, you know, having mm -hmm. them there. And then they know, you know, when they come down, they feel the power and they feel the connection and they know without, how important it is. Without I doubt. Uh, we got to do outreach rail stations. Sometimes people get behind the mic and think that's it. You can reach thousands of people. Of course, we can reach thousands of people, but those people want to see you also. So I'm always out in my community. I'm always, I'm always touching people. Period. You got to touch people. You got to touch them. Because uh, if, if I wasn't in that uh, um, that steam room, that young man, now I reinforced him even more. I re and now I was in there flowing, kicking him. I'm at 55, too. And he's 27. I'm kicking it at 50. And I'm throwing the lyrics. So now we got even closer to the bond. And I, and I just met him on a coincidence. And he's going to go tell everybody, guess who I met today? Da, 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 you know. Right, right. That personal so, touch. So it goes. It, it goes back to the Kirby vacuum cleaner man or woman way back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Oh my God, that happened to me. It, 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 go, it goes back to that technology. That's the best technology when you just go door to door. You touch the people. You look at them in the eye. If they got bad breath, you smelling their breath and all that. And so, but that's that's the best way to influence people is is when uh, you. When they can feel your 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 essence, they can feel your your uh, your uh, if you're authentic or not. And so, uh, most of the people that I have to talk to on the telephone now, they know me personally because I've developed a relationship. Even though they said no last year, they so they said no two years ago, they said no six months ago. All oh, now it's March came, baby. Oh, <laughs> yeah. March is a different day now. So now all of people are saying yes, will you? Yes, we need you. So, uh, so I, I, stay, I, I just stay, you know, proactive. Of course, we're gonna get no's, uh, but eventually, the, uh, the, those are gonna turn into yeses. Especially, uh, most people and any people, when you analyze people, they just want to see if you're authentic and if you're gonna have consistency in what you do. When uh, those two obstacles are con conquered, then uh, sure, you're, you're on your mission to success. Did I have any, any other questions? I got a lot of people on here. I know all y'all people is on here. Good advice, thank you. I like that. Okay. That's I got really where we're different. I was just gonna say real quick, you know, that's where we're different from big commercial stations. They 
they can't be out of there on the street meeting people because they aren't, you know, they aren't people. <laughs> so that's right. the advantage, you know, is that we can really touch them and they meet us and they go, wow, you started a radio station and that's really, you know, that's, that's really something, you know, or you work yep. at a radio station, you know, right. and it really, it really creates that personal connection. I think that's really good advice. Another thing that we did this summer, another thing we did this summer, we had uh, seven interns. Um, they had a, and uh, summer youth employment this 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 uh, summer here, and we, we we requested as many students as possible. So we had ninth graders all the way up to college age. We created a teen show, and we're going to continue that teen show. We're going to move it to a Saturday. Uh, we'll get uh, a team representing from every high school in a metro here, even in the suburbs. Uh, we're going to have them either probably even remote in to to create the show but we'll have them hopefully come down to the studio and where they can create their own messentry. Um, teens are, 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 are basically are, they influence the buying decisions for adults. Remember that young people influence the buying decisions for older folks because my son or dad, I need this, or my grandson, I'm rolling with him, be three or four, pop pop. I need, he, he, he influencing me, he influenced me to, to spend my money. And so, uh, so, 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 so you gotta remember that. So uh, we gotta start inviting young people in, maybe create, create that format in order to create other dollar opportunities. We have that flexibility where larger stations don't have that flexibility. And we're empowering the, the future generations of listeners if we give young people a platform. Now, we can go out there, children hospitals and stuff like that. Uh, 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 Kellogg cereal, uh, uh, Procter and Gamble. You know, so I'm thinking big time, baby. I'm thinking about going to Cincinnati where Procter and Gamble is, and say, I got a teen show, and my teen show reaches tens of thousands of people. We uh, we need a toothpaste ad. We need a toothpaste ad, baby. <laughs> Only way to do it is to do it. All right, so. Uh, so, so the, the, that's kind of like our future, but also that that keep us engaged because you know the, the young people are the one that are, that are really suffering mentally because they can't go to school. Uh, they dealing with a, 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 a abuse that's not being reported because they can't go to school because uh, teachers were the front line. Uh, so I want to make sure that we keep a voice for them in this community. So if they talk to their peers, have an outlet, an outlet also to express themselves. Uh, and so, uh, so, so that's, that's our total mission. Um, our, our goal is to survive. Um, like I said, uh, hmm. our, my degree is in behavioral science. So I look, I push everything as, uh, as a test. I, I test things. I feel that uh, we are the, um, um, I feel that we are real time testers of information. Uh, Gallup is here. You got, everybody know about Gallup. They located here in Omaha. But what Gallup is missing is uh, write everything down. There's probably about 30% of the population that's illiterate. And so radio gets over that, that, that barrier of uh, illiteracy because people, if they lost it, they can hear, they understand. And so um, um, I'm talking to people right now, developing a live, a live ecosystem where we can create real time. Um, data based off of the question that is given to see what kind of input the community uh what what can we uh what direction that community want to go in based off that question and have that, that in, in real time and and get a a, a a real wide random sample versus a, a specific sample and then trying to mathematically equate it and say well this amount of people are are, are affected when they don't really have a significant sample. So, um, so we're doing a, a, a lot of things. I, I mean, I, I try everything. Uh, since we control our own ecosystem, we control our own platform, I, I, I'm bold, I'm bold, I'm bold. We gotta be bold, for, for without a doubt, without a doubt. And so uh, I appreciate uh, the, you know, the, uh, the fellowship even here. Um, uh, it's, 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 it's empowering, without a doubt. So is there any, anything, any questions? 
anything that I missed out, anything that I covered that that uh, you want me to uh, to uh, reflect on? Thank you. That was that was great. Very empowering um, for us all to be together and share this information. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you, William. That was amazing. Cool. Appreciate you. Uh, one thing I, I want to encourage us to do is uh, if we got old equipment and somebody else needs equipment, uh, if we can share the equipment if someone's starting out, uh, I, I really want to kind of share a network like that because sometimes somebody bears my box might be going out, somebody might have something on the shelf and we might not have the money and, and maybe we can, they can, we can share for, for uh, so, so we can, people can stay on the air. So I, I really want you know, create that kind of ecosystem between the stations too, because we do got stuff that's that's on the on the shelf. I got mixers that might somebody might want to use for. Uh, uh, I, I think that we should start sharing our resources also, as far as knowledge, but also hardware, if, if even software. That's an interesting idea. That it really is. I wonder if we should have a. How platform we should have to let people know that that's available. I mean, we should have that on our Pacifica website as like a swap shop kind of thing or like a Facebook thing or a, what do you guys think? Whatever. <laughs> I, I don't know if people yeah. do forums anymore these days, but that's the kind of thing you would have a forum for, right? For people to post things. Yeah, I suppose we could use the um, the Pacifica station manager's email if someone's got something that you know needs a home could could have a home. You could advertise it that way. Without. Yeah, I think people would get ticked off pretty quickly if we did it that. People get really sensitive about how often that email is used. Oh, so okay. A forum somewhere would be better so that when just you just a place it, where everyone knows they can go. Yeah. Okay. We could do that. I think that's that's a good idea. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Am I done here? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. That was really great. I appreciate your time without a doubt. Uh, I do want to tell you that uh, before we get off, uh, I did write a, a, a grant uh, for broadband here in our state, I follow the Cures Act. Everybody won't get mad at Trump, but Trump put billions of dollars to build broadband in rural areas, and that's always been a dream of mine to create a uh, broadband company in Jason with the radio station uh, because we can push our, our message through the internet. Remember, and so uh, uh, we had a chance to win. We won two grants for two cities here in Nebraska. Uh, Macy, Nebraska, and Winnebago, Nebraska. The, both cities are on the uh, Indian Omaha Indian Reservation, and so they're the one of the tourist poorest communities as well as ours. And um, so, again, taking advantage of Corona dollars because a lot of that dollars have to be spent before December thirty first, and then after December first, they're gonna be allocating a, 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 a new monies for next year allocations. So right now. I would advise you to read legislation, follow the legislation that 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 that, that, that that's allocating the, the monies. Fantastic. So, William, I'm going to be around when these calls so we can run more ideas by you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Sounds good. <laughs> I'll, I'll take you up on that. Are, are you the matriarch? You you the matriarch? I'm not. <laughs> matriarch, wow. Oh yeah, I'm not. <laughs> First time I've been called a matriarch. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm yelling. I'm yelling. I'm following. I'm following instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Good I have to boy. think about that one for a while. <laughs> That's what I get for no longer dyeing my hair. <laughs> hey, 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 no, no, hey, great, great is in. Great is in. Oh yeah, great is in, my friend. Raise in. That's good. I got yeah, it. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, Kev, uh, Kevin, wish you had some hair. Is that Kevin down there? <laughs> Kevin, wish he had some gray hair down there. Yeah. I, you know what? I don't miss it at all. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I miss my black hair. <laughs> William, I hope you'll um, consider presenting at the Grassroots Radio Conference. We're going to, I think you missed that part of the conversation, but we're digging in deeper next week on this call. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do a virtual conference. It's going to be October 9th through 11th. And we're going to focus on the, the three big topics right now, the pandemic, the protests, and the presidential election. And one day is going to be on each of those things. So it would be great to have you come talk about some of these COVID dollars and things like that. But you can communicate later. I just want to put that B in your bonnet. Okay, I, I, I will be more than happy. I, I appreciate the invitation and uh, I, I accept it right now. So. All right, we got, we got our first official speaker. <laughs> so. Good work. Here we go, see? <laughs> see, see now, isn't that bold, Sharon? That was bold. See, see, got results, got results. I love it, make it happen, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. That'll be great. Really informative. And hopefully we can all use this and go, we'll come back next week. We'll all have a bunch more money, right? <laughs> Thank you. Hey, uh, hey uh, close mouth. Do not get fed. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be hungry next week. I, I, I want to hear some full mouths next week. I want to hear some full mouths. Okay. Sounds good. Uh. <laughs> Well, does anyone have anyone else have any thing they want to talk about before we go? We're, it feels like we're early. That's good. We all got things to do. Okay. Well, we can all plan to. We'll we'll be here next week for the GRC meet and greet, talking, talking feedback, talking whatever you want to do GRC. Which yeah. Please think about speaker ideas, maybe people on your staff that have done certain things. Davine, I know you had the, the live streamer uh, that, that kind of hit it big with his live stream. So if you guys have anyone around your station that has done great things revolving around either the pandemic or the protests or the presidential election, or if your station does you know, uh, anything around those topics, let me know and we'd love to, we'd love to uh, start filling up our schedule. Because it's going to be, I think it's going to be great and it's going to be a lot of fun. It's just um, kind of pulling it together at the last second, but that's how we do GRC, right? We <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> so thank you all. That'll be great. Thanks for the opportunity. And thanks again, William. All right, no problem. Appreciate you job. Thanks, William. All right, see you later. See you later. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>